Okay, this is the third video to make a merit level graph for this experiment. This continues from the achieved level graph. And what we need is to make error bars. Now, before we make the error bars, we have to calculate these uncertainties from the linear data. So here we go, into our Excel file. Now what we've done here is the merit level data might look a little different than your achieved level data. Most merit level data would include the time of more than one circle. In this case, we have 10 circles, 10 periods. The average is of a single period. So the graph would have looked identical, no matter how the data flow came. But what we need to do is make error bars on this graph right here. We need to know how good these little blue dots are. How good are they left and right for centripetal force? How good are they up and down for the inverse of period squared? To do that, we need uncertainties. So here we go. The uncertainty for each centripetal force comes from each L. Each L had an uncertainty of 0 0.01. So what we do is we use that 0 0.01. We say equals 0 0.01, and we divide by each length, so you just click on the first length, then you're going to take that, and you're going to multiply with each F, and that gives you a number. Now, this process is explained in other files, so you might have to review how to calculate uncertainties. That's the easier one. The harder one is the absolute uncertainty on each inverse of the period squared. This comes from the maximum and minimum subtract divided by 2. We divide again by 10 because each of these values up here is 10 periods. We then divide by the average and then finally we multiply by 2 because we're squaring things. And again, there are some rules here that you might have to review. So really quickly, we take the maximum of the first set of values we subtract the minimum of the same set of values. We put in some separate brackets so that we can take half of that range. Then we divide by 10. And then we divide by the average. So we click on G3 box. And finally, we're going to multiply everything with 2 because we are squaring the values. And when we square the values, we double the percentage. Finally, we need to multiply by 1 over the time squared. So finally we get this value. Looks a little crazy. You can trim the numbers if you want. So the correct number of sig figs are in this line and the correct number of sig figs are in this line. So we'll do that really quickly. We can trim the numbers. So format cells. Change the number. These numbers came from values that had four sig figs. So, but they're uncertainties. So you probably want, let's say you want that many decimal places. You can argue this a long time, but for right now, we'll just go quickly. For this here, if we want to format the cells and we change the number for each uncertainty on this. Oh, let's go for three decimal places. So, here are our uncertainties, okay? Now, the next thing, now that we have our calculated uncertainties, again, you might have to review your notes on how that was done. Now we have to graph these uncertainties, okay? Even if you don't have Excel, make your uncertainties. Even if you do these by hand and do these by hand, we have to graph them to get a merit or excellence on this in turn. So, here's our graph. How do we put error bars on this? We go to the Layout button. On the Layout button, there's an Error Bar button. We click the Error Bars. I usually have to do it this way. We go to More, Error Bar, Options. Now, when I did that, if you look behind, there's massive error bars. We don't want those massive error bars. It comes up with vertical error bars. We want customized, so the bottom button. We want to specify which vertical error bars, I repeat, vertical error bars. So we'll move this sideways so that we can see the values that we want. We click specify.
specify value and the positive error bars, we want these numbers, just highlight them. Then you click this little thing here, and for the negative value, you click that there, and you highlight those numbers. Okay, close this. As you can see, the vertical error bars are what we want. Now the horizontal ones are so if we just click on them, and then we right-click, we can actually format those horizontal error bars. If we go into formatting the horizontal error bars, now it's at horizontals, we want to customize those. Specify that value, click on that little button, drag all those, and again for the bottom, drag all those. Hit OK, hit Close, and now the horizontal error it. We now have this graph at merit level. So, when we print this graph, it's ready with our formula, 1 over t squared, with the gradient and the intercept. It's ready for the error bars, the largest error bars from this dot up here. The smallest ones are so small they barely show up. So that when we print, we file, we print, you will line up the error bars to make your error line. This is how to make a merit level graph.